Hello, uh, my name is uh, James Wong, and I was the, uh, the Vice President of Research and uh, Technology at Augusta Westland. We started this uh, program, uh, this department, about eight years ago, and the objectives we want to develop the latest technology for the uh, Augusta Westland, which now is called Finn Mechanical Helicopter Division. How can we use technology to make us become the leader and uh, produce a safe and the best uh, helicopter in the world. So what we have done is we have a, a many over two dozen R&D projects was running simultaneously. And the, one of the projects I'd like to introduce you today is our Project Zero. This project was started in 2010. And the objective is we would like to test out, develop many different innovative concepts and ideas and try them out on a platform which we call it a technology incubator and for example the project zero is a fully electric vehicle so because it had never been done before we would like to build a, a large scale vertical takeoff aircraft totally powered by electric so what we have done this is uh, this is powered by lithium rechargeable battery and uh, this thing has an endurance about 10 minutes and it can take off vertically like a helicopter with the rotor flat and then the objective is that we would like to have the helicopter with the two rotors can be able to tilt forward and then they can fly forward like an airplane mode and to, why are we doing this because Augusta Western we have three business model so the three business model uh, now, of course, it's called Finn Mechanical Helicopter Division. Is we want to be the world leader in rotorcraft. We also want to be the world leader in tilt rotor technology, and we also want to be the world leader in RUAV as the rotary unmanned air vehicle. So basically, the Project Zero became a very good uh, technology demonstrator for all three technology. We're able to develop the control laws and uh, learn many things about tilt rotor technology through this when we designed it and we also were able to synergize with the rotary unmanned air vehicle program which currently has been going on and developing for the last five years and we are also want to synergize and borrow a lot of the technology that came out of the Project Zero to be applicable in the future to use some future helicopter. For example, uh, what are some of the technology developed by this uh, group of young people? Uh, this helicopter or this tilt rotor, whichever you want to call it, it's uh, fully composite with a carbon graphite skin and the rotor blade and the rotor shroud are completely made from uh, carbon and then the inside was a metal skeleton and uh, the technology we use to manufacture this large skill structure using large molding is uh, being considered for one day to manufacture a helicopter fuselage. You know, why do you have to build any airplane or fuselage in small pieces and rivet to together? Why can we not mold them in large pieces from the nose to the back to produce better uh, consistency in quality, repeatability, man mass manufacturing to re reduce the cost? And some other uh, technology we derive on this is, uh, for example, this this is complete electric power and there's no hydraulic control either. All the control are done through what we call EMA, electrical mechanical actuators. Electrical mechanical actuators are basically some tiny motor, they can work on the jack screw, they turn, they spin to move the uh, control services. Uh, some of the large commercial airline now their flaps are actuated by EMA. For example, our AW169 helicopter, uh, the, land, the retractable landing gear is no longer hydraulic. It's actually using EMA electric control, uh, retractable retract. And another program we're developing research on the, is called the active trilling edge flap. Most of the um, company that have been working on the research of active trilling edge flap, they use piezoelectric crystal, which are very fragile and can easily br break, and they're also not very powerful. So uh, in our active trilling edge flap program that we're researching on, we're using similar, the micro EMA technology developed here to actuate all the trilling edge flaps. And hopefully we would like to uh, flight test our active trilling edge flap in the next one year. 
on our one of a helicopter program. Another innovation we have a pattern on this is the individual blade control, the IBC. Con con uh, conventional helicopter, uh, they use a uh, swash plate underneath the main shaft to control the individual blade pitch angle. Here we have eliminated the, uh, the swash plate. So what we have done is we, we put something we call the IBC. IBC is every, on all three individual blades, each blade can independently change the blade pitch angle as it goes around azimuthally around the whole rotor system. Each blade has its own little actuator. It spins with the rotor system. What's the advantage of that? The advantage of that is allow the blade, you can control the blade pitch angle as it goes around, and you can vary the angle at any azimuth angle when you want it. So there's a feedback system that you could put an accelerometer in the system and then you could measure that uh, vibration level. This IBC technology will allow you to have active vibration control to reduce vibration. It will also allow you to have uh, active control of uh, acoustic signature to reduce external noise and to improve aerodynamic efficiency and also, for example, to improve the gust response. If there's a gust of the, the helicopter or the aircraft during the flight, the, it will automatic, it can, you can automatically adjust it to change the blade pitch angle. So there are many benefits. One day, we would like to consider and put an IBC on a helicopter. And another reason we put this project together is we want to form a skunk work-like team to motivate and introduce and breed the next generation of smart engineers. In today's environment, and uh, when we talk about building a large-scale airplane helicopter, we have hundreds and even thousands of engineers working on it. And uh, most engineers will only have a chance to work on a portion of the airplane or aircraft. Could be just a structure, could be just a door, could be just the landing gear, the control server. What I would like to do is to introduce this opportunity to the 20 young people They have a chance in six months, they design, build, and test this aircraft all by themselves. That's what we did. So they get to see the complete cycle from the beginning, the birth, the concept, all the way to use their hand and to build this. And that was a very successful program. And now today, the, this program was the, all the 20 young people now that start working, graduate onto other programs now. They're working on some of the other very interesting programs. For example, Mateo standing there, he's one of the young men that work on this program. And now he's working on the program, what we call the NGCTR at the Finn Mechanical Helicopter Division. NGCTR stands for Next Generation Civil Tilt Rotor, which is a uh, tilt rotor designed for 20 to 25 passengers. It's a bigger version of our AW609 tilt rotor. It's also it's a commercial version similar to the famous the V22 tilt rotor. And that is the one of the program which will be uh, hopefully flying in the next few years. And that's our one of the big R&D programs. So, uh, what's the limiting factor of this aircraft? The limiting factor currently of this technology is the endurance. It's, uh, the electric motor is very powerful already. They provide five kilowatts per kilogram of uh, power density already. However, today's uh, the energy density for the lithium rechargeable battery used, they only has about 170 watt hour per kilogram of uh, energy level. So in few years, we hopefully will be able to raise the time from 10 minutes to 100 minutes. Thank you.